Good morning, Vineyard. We're so glad to have you with us. Please stand and join us in worship.
I will exalt you, God my King. I bless your name forever. I will exalt you, God my King. I bless your name forever. And I will exalt you, God my King. I bless your name forever. And man shall not live on bread alone, but every word from God. And give us today our daily bread. Be filled with your Spirit. Our Father in heaven, blessed will be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, here as it is in heaven. And I will exalt you, God my King, I praise your name forever. And I will exalt you, God my King, I praise your name How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh God Almighty. God, I pray that we will be able to behold your beauty. Come and move in the power of your presence and do what only you can do. It's in your most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for worshiping. We're so glad that you are here, whether you're here in the hall or online watching at home. Uh, take the next couple of seconds to meet and greet your neighbor.
Well, thank you so much. Good morning, Vineyard Cincinnati. My name is Jennifer. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. And I'm Daniel, and we're excited to tell you about some events coming up. And today, Jennifer, you look fancy. Well, you look very dapper yourself. Thank yes. You. So, hey, if you all love to have an opportunity to do something special uh, one evening, get out of the house for the night, have it on your calendar, we have an invitation for you. So this summer, we are celebrating 15 years of the Healing Center, Inspiring Hope. Yes, give it up Let's for the go. Healing Center. Love it. They've been transforming lives of thousands of families in the greater Cincinnati area. So we want to give you the chance to get fancy, come out to the Healing Center's Inspiring Hope Gala. Oh, that's embarrassing. It's gala, Jennifer. Um, it's really not. Uh, I want to invite you guys to the Inspiring Hope Gala uh, that's coming up on... Daniel, I looked it up on dictionary.com press the little audio thing. Folks, it's Gala. And it's happening on July 21st at the Sharonville Convention Center. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. We'll have a reception, a silent auction, and then we're going to have a great dinner together and a brief program. So you can check out your program for more details. I guess I'll trust you. Uh, looking forward you to the gala uh, that's coming. And also looking forward to prophetic prayer and communion that's coming soon on June 24th. These are one of my favorite worship nights. We get to worship, we get to celebrate, we get to connect, and we have communion. And we also have prayer teams from around the city who are trained and equipped to pray over you. And we have had so many people talk about how impactful this is. And I love prophetic prayer and communion. I do too. I love receiving prophetic prayer and communion. It's so encouraging to me. It just reminds me about God's faithfulness and how he loves me. I also like to write down afterward everything I heard so that I don't forget it. So you all might want to consider bringing a journal, a notebook, something with you so you can record what God is saying to you throughout the evening. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great idea because so many people have said, this helped me see what God had for me moving forward, and they wanted to hold on to that. And so it really helps us if you register for this event because we want to make it an awesome experience. And so you can go on our events page to register, or if you just want to get connected with all the events happening at Vineyard Cincinnati and you're new with us, please grab the Connect card in the seat in front of you and take it out to the info area. We would love to connect with you, get to know you more, and help you get connected with all that's happening at Vineyard Cincinnati. And speaking of prayer and the Healing Center, I think this really cool story that happened just recently is we had a volunteer named Lindsay. She's been serving for over a year at the Healing Center, and she shared this with us. She said, I was struggling to check in with a new family because they were Spanish-speaking, and I'm not. Sometimes we forget what a, lang what a barrier language can be for people uh, that are in need of assistance. Now, it was a large family. I needed to get details on each member to complete the process. I began to quietly pray that God would intervene so I could honor this family well. And I could tell they were getting frustrated with my lack of understanding. Then all of a sudden, another guest saw what was happening and they offered to translate. What a God moment. God used that situation to call another one of his kids into action, stepping out in faith and helping others in need. It's those powerful moments when I see the activation of the Holy Spirit as he brings his kids alongside one another to offer help. That's how I know I'm exactly where God wants me to be. That's a great story. I love that story. It's powerful just like when you get in a challenging moment to, for Lindsay just to pause and pray and say, God, I need your help right now, and to see him come through in such a practical way. Yeah, and he came through through a gift that he'd given someone else, and that person freely offered that gift. He gives us so many gifts, um, our time, our talents, and or always our money, of course, So, and he wants us to freely offer those to other people. So one of our gifts is, of course, our financial resources. So if you came prepared to give today your regular tithes and offerings, you have three ways to do that. You can text or go online or drop it off in the boxes while you're here. Would you join me in prayer over our offering today? Jesus, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. You are always generous. You're so wonderful in the gifts that you give us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to look for opportunities to use our gifts for your glory. Thank you for these tithes and offerings. Would you use them to further your kingdom. We love you. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning, Vineyard. How are we doing this morning? Good. I just got to say first, I'm really glad they took that red carpet away before that started. Uh, my name is Tyler, and I'm the worship director here at Vineyard, and I'm really excited to uh, get to continue our series um, called Produce, where we're talking about this idea of a letter that Paul writes to this group of people in a city called Galatia. And he talks about this idea of the fruit of the Spirit. And so typically, because of the nature of my role, uh, I typically get to be with uh, the worship team when we're leading worship. And so because I was teaching this week, I actually, I asked Matt, I was like, hey, since I'm teaching, would you wanna lead worship? Like we could do the direct flop. Um, but what, what we realized is Matt only knows how to play 30 seconds of one song. And uh, just the truth is, it has nothing to do with Jesus. And so uh, in my very professional way, we decided to go a different direction, uh, which is a really nice way of saying it just wasn't gonna work out. But um, no, in, in all seriousness, last week, Matt shared with us uh, the idea of just what Paul is writing to us in this, in this um, letter to this group of people in Galatia. So we know this as the letter to the Galatians, and Paul is writing to this community. It would be similar to if someone wrote a letter to the group at Vineyard Cincinnati, right? It, it, He's writing this letter to this community and he's talking to them about what it looks like to be marked by Jesus. So up until this point, being marked by God was something that was very cultural and it was very specific and it really only happened to the Jewish people. And so now Paul is bringing this to saying, look, I'm, Jesus is offering this to all people and this is what it looks like to be marked by him. And that by doing so, now this is what's on display of our life. And so, uh, we wanna be really clear as we talk about it today, I just wanna say this before we jump in, is it's one fruit with multiple different aspects. Everybody say that with me, one fruit, one fruit. Not fruits, but one fruit, right? It's not, well, I'm pretty good at patience, but I'm not too great at joy. It's not that. When you follow Jesus and are marked by him, all of it comes with it. And that's what is truly on display of our life when we follow him. So uh, really excited today about to dive in and how just abiding is how it, all comes back to it, abiding in Jesus. So um, you wanna know what I think is the most loaded question of all time? The most loaded question of all time is, will you watch my dog while I'm on vacation? <laughs> it's up there with like, will you help me move? I mean, that's another most loaded question of all time. No, will you watch my dog while I'm on vacation? I think it's the most loaded question of all time for one main reason, because when somebody asks you that, they're not asking you because they think that you're this amazing dog watcher. Like, uh, does anybody remember Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer? I remember watching him on Animal Planet and being like, this guy's amazing. Like, there's something going on with this guy because he could make a dog do anything he wanted. But that's not why people ask you to watch a dog when they go on vacation. They're asking you because they don't want to put their dog in a doggy daycare. Like, they don't want to put their dog up in a hotel. And so I, I, I have been asked to watch a lot of dogs in my life. And uh, I don't think anybody has ever watched or asked me because they think I'm this amazing dog watcher. But when I was eight years old, I got asked to watch, I got that question asked of me for the very first time. Will you watch our dog while we're on vacation? It was our neighbors at the time. And uh, they had this older dog and it wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot that went into taking care of this dog. It was super easy going and I really liked this dog. I mean, every time I'd come home from school, the dog would be in the front yard and so I would just spend a lot of time with this dog. And we didn't have a dog. It was like, this, it's that time in your life where every Christmas you just ask for a dog and you never get a dog. And so I loved this dog. And so when, uh, when I was eight, our neighbors asked my mom, they said, would, you want, would, would Tyler want to watch our dog while we're on vacation? And I didn't, I mean, I was eight. I didn't know that was like a thing that happened. So I was like, I mean, I guess I'll watch their dog. And then my mom said this tiny little detail that changed everything, and she said, if you watch their dog, they might pay you. Yeah, you guys are kind of reacting how I did. I was like, pay me? Like, uh, at that time in my life, I was doing projects in school where it was like, what do you wanna be where you grow up? And I would say like astronaut and baseball player, but that year I changed to dog watcher because I knew if I was a dog watcher, I would make money. I mean, I, I, I was like, I had business plans now. And so, so I, of course I said yes. And so every day for an entire week, I went over and took care of this dog. I mean, I went over in the morning. I fed him, let him out. I went over at lunch. I mean, I was like even like brushing him to make sure that he was like looking good when they came back. I'd go over in the evening, take care of him. I mean, I was like hustling to take care of this dog. And in my head, I was like, I'm gonna do this job like really well. Like I'm gonna stay the course. 
I'm going to work because I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming at the end of the week because I wanted to make $20 and be rich. And so at the end of the week, uh, they come home and they come home late at night. And so the next morning I run over to their house and I like knock on the door and, and like I'm trying to contain what I know is coming. And so uh, I'm like small talking with them. Have you ever tried to small talk with an eight-year-old? It doesn't go super well. Um, and so I'm just talking, and finally they say, hey, thanks so much, and they hand me an envelope. And so I run home, and I run straight upstairs, and I'm, sta- I'm sitting there in this moment, and it's like, like I can feel how this special this moment is. And so I open the envelope, and I pull it out, and there's a little card with a dog on it. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I'd watch the dog. Right there. And so I open the card, and I slowly opened it. It's like I've seen out of a movie where somebody opens something and you see the light on their face. I mean, that's what's happening, right? If you were there and watched it, that's what would have been happening. And I'm opening it, opening, opening, and I finally open it all the way and guess what was inside? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Nothing but a thank you. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but do you know what you can't buy Legos with? <laughs> thank yous. You can't buy Legos. Walmart doesn't take them. Nobody takes them. I'm serious. I I literally, I opened it up and there was nothing. It just said, thanks for watching our dog. And I thought, what the heck? I thought if I stayed faithful and stayed the course, then I was going to get $20 and be rich, right? Like I was like, I was patient the whole time. Like he wouldn't do what I wanted him to do, but I still did it. I brushed him and all this stuff. I mean, I was like, what the heck? I started thinking things like, I thought if I would have stayed faithful, that I would have gotten this at the end. And as I thought about that story, I started to realize that we can do that with Jesus. Like we can do the same thing where we pay, we kind of position ourselves in that way, right? The problem comes when we choose the fruit with an expectation to see something else. Like in that that story, I I really thought I'm choosing to be faithful and internally I wanted faithfulness to get me somewhere else. Like in that time, I wanted patience to push me a little further to be able to get something or acquire something. I wanted, I wanted it to take me one step further. And the problem then can become is we can spiral to where we live in this perpetual if-then statement with Jesus where it's just fully based around what we desire or what we want. And it comes from a place of choosing how we live based off what we can create or what we can gain from it. And so what I think Paul is trying to tell us in this idea of the fruit of the Spirit is that there's a different way. There's a different way that we can live that is so much better and greater. And so before we jump in and read Galatians chapter five, here's what I wanna do. I wanna give us a little bit of context around this idea of Holy Spirit. Um, so for some of you, this, you may have heard everything I'm about to say a million times, so it's just a good reminder. And if you haven't, I just wanna help us have some context around who Holy Spirit is and why it's significant in this conversation. So two weeks ago, we celebrated a day called Pentecost. And what happens on Pentecost is it's the day where the Spirit of God is poured out on all people. So what happens on the day of Pentecost is the disciples are praying in the upper room and then this moment where the Spirit fills them and it's this wild moment where they begin speaking in different languages that they don't know and people are just t- are so taken back by it. But what happens on that day is Jesus, who came, died, rose to be with, to, rose again and then ascended to be with the Father. Through that whole time, he said, I'm going to send the Spirit as the helper to the people of God. So that's what happens on the day of Pentecost. We celebrate the day that Jesus brings the Spirit to all people of God. And it's really significant. I kind of said this already a little bit earlier, but it's all people. So it's, at this time, the only people that could have followed God, it was, he was the God of the Jewish people. And so up at now, poured out his spirit on all people. So everybody who would come and confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in him would now be able to encounter this Holy Spirit. So we celebrate Pentecost because Pentecost was the day where the spirit was poured out on all people. He was given as the helper from Jesus. And so then Paul writes in a separate letter to a group of people in a city called Ephesus. He writes, we know this as a letter to the Ephesians. Um, he writes about who Holy Spirit is. He almost gives him, shows what his role is in the story of God. So here's here's what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter one, verse 13. He says, in him, Jesus, so he's talking about in Jesus, you also, when you heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So what Paul is telling us is, look, it says, in Jesus, when you heard the word of truth and believed in him, you now were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And that that Holy Spirit is essentially Jesus's way of saying like, hey, there is so much more to come. So I'm gonna give you this now so that you know there's more to come. It's almost like a, 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 like a down payment or a, 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 a down deposit on something. He's saying there is so much more. So with that in mind, knowing Holy Spirit, what his role is in, in this story of the kingdom of God. Now let's read Galatians chapter five, where Paul talks about walking by the spirit. So here's what he says. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So now we see there's these two things that are, that are um, kind of coming head to head. They're against one another. And one, there can't be both. It's one or the other. There's this tension. And so then Paul writes, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things, there is no law. So if we zoom out of that for a little bit, here's what I think Paul is showing us. He's saying there's this one way that is all focused on abiding in self. It's all about what we can create to have what we desire. Right? It's kind of a little bit what I was living in that story, in the dog watching story, where I was thinking, like, if I work really hard and try to do this, I'm going to get something out of it. It was purely based around what I wanted. But then there's this other way, which says, if I focus on Jesus and really truly being connected to him and marked by him, then this is what will be on display of my life. It's things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness. These, these will be on display of my life. And so I think what Paul is trying to show us is this, that the fruit isn't the prequel, the fruit is the promise. He's trying to tell us that the fruit was never meant to be what we focused on, it was always meant to be Jesus. The fruit isn't the prequel, it's the promise. It was never meant to be something that we could work really hard to acquire, it was never meant to be something that we could try to gain, but it's always just been what's on display in a life abiding in Jesus. And I wanna tell you today, the fruit, it's a really good thing, but it's just not meant to be what we put our focus on. Um, when I was in my early 20s and graduated college, um, I was in that like early 20s, like quarter life crisis, trying to figure out my life phase where you've just come out of a phase of life like school and you're trying to figure things out. Anybody remember that like early 20s transition phase? Some people. I, I remember I was like in this phase where I just graduated college and everybody at school, my professors, all this stuff had said things like, congratulations, welcome to the first day of the rest of your life, which is just not a helpful thing when somebody's trying to figure out like what to do next. Um, and, and I felt like I had like all this pressure from one group of people that was like, you gotta go work, you gotta go do, you gotta go make money because life is expensive. You gotta work, you gotta go, you gotta go. It was exhausting. And then I had this other group of people that was like, oh, just chase your dreams. Oh, if you just do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Like, and that didn't feel real either. And so I just felt like this pressure of like, it was like, go, 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 do, do, do. But I didn't know where to go, 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 or what to do, so I just felt stuck. And I felt like that just was day after day after day and I just felt stuck. I would try to go one direction and it didn't feel right and I'd go another and it just didn't feel right. And so one day I was really frustrated and I was driving in my car and I just, I remember kind of like at a, I was sitting in a red light and I just kind of yelled out loud to God. I just said, all right, if you got something to say, I'm listening. 
which is never a good way to start a conversation with anybody, but especially with uh, the God of the universe. Um, but I just, I, I was so frustrated. I was tired. And so I just said that. I said, if you got something to say, I'm listening. And what happened next will be something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I looked to my right and I saw this license plate. And I, it, it can be a little hard to see, but if you can't read what that says, it says dream tie. And, I, and I, I can't overstate it when I say that this moment changed my life forever. Because my name is Tyler. Ty is something that only the people that are the closest to me call me, or people I spend a lot of time with. Um, the two people that have called me Ty for my entire life are my parents. And they still call me Ty. My, my wife joked, we went on a vacation uh, for the last couple of weeks, and, and she was like, I've never heard Ty more in my life than the last two weeks. But it's just something that my parents have always called me. And then this word dream to me, like I just, I get excited just saying the word dream. I've been, I've been told for a lot of my life, I've, I've, had, I've had the word dream prayed over me. I've had it spoken over me. People said things like, Ty, you're a dreamer. You're a dreamer. And so when I looked to my right in a, in, a, in a moment of just pure frustration, and I looked to my right and saw that license plate, it felt like Jesus was speaking to me in the most intentional way that he could speak to me, which was just by saying, Ty, I love you so much, and I have such good things for you, but let's dream together. Let's do it together. I really think friends, that that license plate, when that moment happened, I think it was Jesus inviting me to abide for the very first time. It was him inviting me to abide for the very first time. And I had to get a picture of it. Like, I know I was driving, but it felt like the ultimate, like, Jesus take the wheel moment. Like, <laughs> like he, he showed me the license plate and I was talking to him, but yeah, so I was like, if I take my hands off the wheel, it's going to be okay. Um, but what Jesus was doing, I think, is he was pointing me to abide and do exactly what John 15 talks about. And here's what it says in John 15. We've heard this, we've said it a bunch of times this year, but it's abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. For I am the vine, you are the branches. And whoever abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus was inviting me to do in that license plate story. He was inviting me to abide. He was trying to show me that the fruit, the outcome, was not what I should put my focus on. It was always that I should put my focus on him and trust that the fruit wasn't the prequel, but it's the promise. And so my challenge for us today is what happens when we take John 15 exactly as it is? Right, in, that, in verse five, can you throw that back up for me, Kyle? Verse five, the I am the vine, you are the branches. Right then, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. It's very clear, abiding comes first and then fruit. It's not fruit and then something else. Abiding comes first. So I think what, what we just need to pay attention to is the fact, this idea, the fruit doesn't come first. Say that with me. The fruit doesn't come first. It's got like a nice cadence to it. The fruit doesn't come first, right? Like how many of you have heard choose joy? I know everybody has heard that. So don't, everyone has heard choose joy, right? Do you guys gotta choose joy? I'm actually gonna challenge us today. Don't choose joy. Choose Jesus and let Holy Spirit transform your joy. Why do we do that? We just said it, say it with me. The fruit doesn't come first. You guys are not very participatory today. It's okay. But here's the thing, right? I, have, I remember that season of my life with the license plate when I was like trying to figure everything out. I remember waking up most days and saying things like, you gotta choose joy. You gotta choose joy. You might not be able to see it. You gotta choose joy. You gotta choose joy. And it's not that choosing joy was wrong. It's just incomplete. It wasn't that I was doing something wrong by choosing joy. I just wasn't choosing the whole thing. What if we choose patience? What if we choose peace, right? We could go through all these. Don't choose peace, choose Jesus and allow Holy Spirit to rest on you with real peace. Why? 
because the fruit doesn't come first. What about self-control? Self-control is one that it can be hard to talk about. Don't choose self-control. Don't try to muster up self-control. Choose Jesus and allow Holy Spirit to transform your heart and mind, to direct your steps. Why? Because the fruit doesn't come first. What I'm trying to tell you, we could go through all, the entire list of the fruit of the Spirit. We could go through every aspect. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Don't choose the fruit. Choose Jesus. Because the fruit doesn't come first. And so if we really want to be a community that truly abides, then we just have to know it was always about choosing Jesus. And so as we close, uh, I want to look at Psalm 84 this morning. And I love how the message talks about this. This feels like uh, exactly what Paul's inviting us into, which is just this. It says, and how blessed all those in whom you live, whose lives become roads you travel. The psalmist is saying, how blessed are those in whom God dwells. And I love the imagery of that, whose lives become roads you travel. In other words, it's saying when we really abide and rest in Jesus, when we really trust in who he is and just be with him, our lives actually become the journey that God might travel along. And it can't help but impact the people around us. It can't help but change the people we interact with. If we really believe that our lives are the roads that God travels along, then it can't help but impact the people we encounter at the grocery store. It can't help but impact the people that we encounter at work. It can't help but impact our families and the people we love most. The reality is, And when we rest in Jesus, this is what happens. And so this just leads us to our action steps, which is to be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and do what he said, right? It's a simple thing of what we're talking about today. Be with Jesus, abide in Jesus. I'm the branch, you are the vine. Abide, be connected to the vine. Become like Jesus. Watch what will be on display of your life, the fruit of the spirit, right? Become like Jesus is seeing these things on display. And then to do what he said. Go and tell that Jesus is Lord. We make disciples. It's so simple, but it's so, it can be so hard. And so uh, as we talk about this idea of abide, as we kind of think about how do we do this well, we're gonna take communion today as a way of practicing what it looks like to abide. So um, you should have gotten communion when you walked in. If you didn't, just throw a hand in the air and and, uh, one of our ushers will bring it to you. But we're just gonna take some time to abide. We're gonna take some time to just rest in Jesus. So go ahead and open your communion because it can get loud with all the plastic. and uh, So go ahead and open it and just hold the bread in one hand and the juice in the other. As I was thinking about communion for today, one, one idea I had was when, when my wife and I have dinner together, um, we, we intentionally don't have our phones at the table um, because what would happen is if we had our phone at the table, anytime something vibrated, anytime I felt a notification, I, my brain would then be going to there. I couldn't be fully present to her in that moment. And so uh, I wanna invite you for the next, the rest of our gathering, uh, do whatever you need to do to be able to be fully present to God. We're gonna practice that during communion and we're gonna practice that during worship. So um, this is a way that we focus on Jesus. And so I want you to just hold the bread in your hand. For this is the body of Christ. And he gave this up so that you could experience a life with him that is full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control when we choose him. So let's choose him today and eat 
the bread, which is the body of Christ. And then we take the blood of Christ, which was shed for you so that you could know Holy Spirit and that the things on display of your life would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we go and we drink the blood of Christ. And so we're just gonna take a few moments to just abide. I wanna invite you, just settle in a little bit. Get comfortable. If you wanna close your eyes, you can close your eyes. If you wanna hold out your hands, you can hold out your hands. We talked about at the beginning of the year, this idea of be still and know. Let's just rest. Be still and know that he is God right now. Holy Spirit, we rest in you. We rest on you, Lord.
You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. From you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. God, you deserve the glory. I feel God maybe just inviting us today. I feel really maybe pushed in this direction. If some of you um, feel like maybe God has that license plate moment for you today, um, just wherever you're at right now, if you feel like that's you, if you feel like God is speaking really specifically to you today in a really um, in a way you've never experienced before, um, just right where you are, I just want you to hold out your hands. I could make a huge moment of it. I just want you to hold out your hands as if you're receiving something. And I just want you to say, Jesus, I'm listening. Just maybe not with as much attitude as I had that day. But just, Jesus, I'm listening. And then just wait. And let's see what God might say. We pay attention to your voice this morning. We give our full attention to your presence. fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God in all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so 
so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing Of the goodness of God Come on, let's sing that again All my life Cause all my life You have been faithful All my sing of the goodness of God. Oh, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. Just rest in his presence. Just 
just rest in the truth of who Jesus is. Rest in the fact that when you choose Jesus, all this will be added. You don't have to formulate, formulate your own joy. You can choose Jesus and let him transform you into joy. You don't have to choose kindness. You choose Jesus and allow him to transform the way you think about kindness. I'd maybe invite you to think, what's that thing that you've been focusing on? Was it love? Was it joy? Was it peace? What are you focusing on that you're trying to get? And how do you let that go today? How do you just change your thinking a little bit and choose Jesus instead? Let's do that now. Let's choose Jesus. Let's just sing this. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you That's our response, let's sing it again Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Oh God, how I need you. Oh God, how I need you. God, we need you. If that's true for you today, just say, God, I need you. I wanna invite our prayer teams to come forward. Um, and. And, and, and here's what I want to invite you. I want, any, I want to invite all of you, come get prayer. But really specifically this morning, I just feel like the Holy Spirit might be saying this now. If you feel like you've been putting your focus on something like love, something like peace, something like joy, if you've been putting all your focus there, hoping that it'll get you where you want to go, and you want to let go of that today, if you want to release that and say, no, it's not that I don't want to be joyful. I just want to choose Jesus. I wanna invite you to come get prayer today. I wanna invite all of us. What does it look like for us to really abide in who Jesus is? What does it really look like to be connected to him and watch what will be on display of our life through Holy Spirit? Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, so humbly before you we come. God, I just personally I say I'm sorry for all the times that I've chosen the fruit before you. I'm so sorry for all the times that I've chosen what I felt like I could acquire or gain or my own desires over you. And so Lord, this morning I pray that we would be the community that truly abides in Jesus. We would be a community that truly rests in you. I just pray that we would remember today, God, that the fruit doesn't come first. It was always about you. And so we love you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to remind you before you go, baptism classes are happening right now in the big room. So if you want to get baptized, go over to the big room and uh, there'll be prayer teams down front. We love you. See you next week.